Hello everyone, I've been asked a lot recently if I will share a list of the glues that I use in my projects. So I thought I'd switch the camera on so that I can give you a visual representation and also talk through why I use and why I like the glues that I do. So let's move those ones out of the way and start off with glue sticks to start off with. I use a glue stick in nearly every single project um, that I create and these are my two favourite ones. Um, Pritt Original, which is my all-time favourite, but I also like like the scotch glue sticks. Now up until Covid um, I would always use scotch because we go to Costco quite a lot. You can pick these up in a pack of 24 for about nine or ten pounds um, so they're good value for money um, and this was the one I always used to use. It sticks exceptionally well. It says it's a permanent glue stick and it is. Um, the only problem with this one um, it does have a tendency to be a bit gloopy. Now during lockdown I had run out of glue and couldn't get to Costco for obvious reasons so I started looking online and Pritt Original was the best deal I could get and I love it I much prefer this to the scotch um, sticking power wise I would say that they're both equal but this is a much firmer glue um, so you don't get any of the globbies that go with the um, scotch glue stick it's also a lot larger as well this one here is 43 grams whereas this one here is 8 grams one of these would last me um, anything from a few days to a week if I was lucky whereas this just seems to go on forever. My next most used glues are these ones here and let me just break this down into two separate categories. Um, so these ones here are acetone based glues and the art glitter glue is water based so let me just pop that to one side for a second and let's talk about this first. Now the benefit of acetone based glue is that it dries incredibly quickly, um, it doesn't buckle your pages either and it dries completely clear. Um, I cannot tell the difference difference between these three glues and if somebody asked me to do a blind test I honestly would not be able to tell um, the difference. Price wise Beacon Fabri-Tac is the most expensive followed by Beacon 3-in-1 and then Kalal glue being the cheapest but as I've said I honestly can't tell the difference between um, the, these three glues. Now the one difference is the containers that they come in 3-in-1 and Fabri-Tac being the same so this is what this looks like and if I unscrew it we've got a fairly narrow nib which is just great I prefer it to be even narrower you know resembling this one here but it is not oh, bad three in one bottle actually contains Kalal glue which I decanted into the empty three in one bottle what I don't like about the Kalal bottle is the opening it is just far too wide so when you put it onto your project far too much glue comes out and that is its um its main downfall but if you've already got three in one or fabri -Tac, what you can do is decant it into one of these bottles and this glue as I've said to me in my eyes it just performs in exactly the same way I would not be able to tell the difference you can use any of these glues with any of your fabric and paper crafting projects as well as glass leather woods and trims absolutely fantastic but the one thing that I have found the more the more I've been using these glues is that if you apply too thick a layer you can actually feel the texture of the glue underneath your your project so it leaves sort of lumps and bumps underneath dries very hard and brittle and the paper becomes stiff and I'm sure that that wouldn't happen if you were able to apply this in a much thinner layer so I put it out there to um, Colal Fabri-Tac 3-in-1 come up with a nozzle like the art glitter glue and I think that that would be the solution to using these glues for paper crafters. So moving on to Art Glitter Glue. Now Art Glitter Glue is a white water-based adhesive. Absolutely fantastic stuff. I cannot rate this glue highly enough. I absolutely love it. I've got two different sizes of containers here. I've got the small 60ml 2 ounce bottle. I have also purchased the metal nib. So the bottle itself set me back £7, £7.50 and I paid a couple of pounds extra as well for the metal nib um, which is a precision nib. Absolutely well worth it in my opinion and then I've got the 240 ml 8 ounce refill bottle as well um which was just over £20 here in the UK. Now they only sell this glue um, during the spring and summer months. Apparently it does not travel well during the winter um, and freezing temperatures so they just don't sell it but it should be starting to come back on the market again soon. So 
do I like so much about this glue? Um, well, for starters, you only need a tiny amount of it um, and the metal nib at the top allows you to do that. You can see how tiny um, that um, opening is. It dries almost instantly to a clear finish. Um, you can use it with fabrics or paper crafts as well. And the two most important things that I like about this glue is firstly, you don't get any buckling of your pages whatsoever, which is just absolutely fantastic. And secondly, it leaves your paper with a beautifully flexible finish, unlike the acetone based glues, which have a tendency to make your pages brittle. Now, another glue um, I find invaluable and I use a lot is matte medium, Galleria matte medium. Now, this is a very runny glue. It's not very tacky at all. And this is just absolutely perfect for gluing things like napkins or tissue papers. And because it's relatively low tack, it's sticky enough to glue them down to your page and, you know, for them to be permanent. Um, but because it's not overly sticky, you don't tear your napkins as much. So again, matte medium, if you are doing a lot of decoupage work, this is just absolutely um, a must in my opinion. Another glue that I have discovered recently is this Mod Podge fabric um, glue. Now, I had run out of my regular Mod Podge and saw this one when I was having a look on Amazon. It was the same price as regular Mod Podge and I thought, I bet you this one will do the same job. Um, but this one um, makes fabric waterproof and I don't know whether any of you can remember, I did a tote bag project recently where I used a napkin as the focal image and by using this Mod Podge fabric glue, it means that I can put that tote bag um, in the wash. So, you know, that's another good glue to consider having in your stash. Well, these are another couple of glues that you may well have seen um, me use in projects in the past. So let's talk about this one first. This is heavy body gel medium and this is primarily used for dimensional projects, 3D dimensional projects. Um, let me just take the lid off so that you can see the consistency of this glue. You can see it's got um, a milky gel texture, really thick. If I tip this jar upside down, you can see that that's not going anywhere. But, you know, for instance, if I was gluing really heavy metal embellishments or jars and things in a dimensional project, you know, really thick, big, bulky buttons and cogs and all of that kind of thing, I could spread a layer of heavy gel medium onto my piece of um, canvas or cardboard, whatever I was using, and just press my bits and pieces in. It takes a long time to dry, but, you know, once it's set, these bits and pieces would not be going anywhere. This is incredibly strong glue, not one that I use particularly often, but, you know, I find it re really useful to have this in my stash. This one here is by Finnebear. This is Finnebear Art Basics. I've also used Golden in the past, and to be honest, they both pretty much do the same kind of thing. Then there's E6000. Now, I get asked a lot of questions about this particular glue. Now, they've recently brought out E6000+, Plus, which is the low odour or no odour version of the original glue. Um, the original E6000 is really smelly, really potent, whereas this one um, is not. Um, whether it's as strong, I really don't know, although I have used this um, particular tube a couple of times and I've had no problems with it. But again, I would use this if I was gluing this metal embellishment down to a project, for instance. So I would just apply um, a good layer of E6000 to the back of this, press it down to my paper or metal, cardboard, whatever it is I'm using. So again, this is another fantastic glue um, to have in your arsenal. It's also great for jewellery making. So for instance, if you want to glue flat back pearls um, to maybe an, a, a ring base or earring backs or something like that, then I think this would be um, a great glue choice. So let's talk dimensional glue next. Now, for those of you that have followed me for a long time will have seen me use dimensional glue um, in many of my projects. And there are several different brands. Um, you've got glossy accents. I haven't got any glossy accents here because mine has run out. Diamond Glaze, which is by Judikins, um, a Nita's clear 3D clear gloss um, gel. There's also one by Deco Art Media and also this one here by um, Mod Podge, D Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. I don't like these two at all. This one here is so thick that it is near on impossible. I consider myself to be quite an agile person with quite strong hands and it is near on impossible to get this um, out of the, the tub. Once it's out, it's actually very good, um, but it's getting it out that's the issue. So, you know, I personally haven't had any joy with this one here. Um, Mod Podge, um, I just find, just has far too many air bubbles in it. Don't like this one um, at all. But I've had great joy with these two, especially the Judikins um, 
um, diamond glaze and if I was to choose between glossy accents diamond glaze and um, Anita's 3D gloss I think I would choose um, the Judikins diamond glaze but they are all good um, glossy accents I would recommend in in a heartbeat um, it's quite expensive this one here I think is the cheapest but they all do the same kind of thing so let me just give you an example as to how the 3d gel works what you do is apply it over the top of a project and you will need to cover the whole of your your area let's see if I can I haven't used this one for quite some time so let's squeeze it out never ever shake these because you will just end up with a gazillion um, amount of air bubbles and you don't want that but you cover the whole of your surface just going left to right it self levels as well and um, it gives you a kind of milky finish to start off with and you need to work on a flat surface I've just used a piece of glue at uh, blue tack to glue my circle down to um, this hexagonal piece of cardstock here. Let me just put the lid back on this. And then you need to move it out of the way, set it to one side for several hours, and when it dries, you will be left with a dimensional, super glossy finish like this. This is um, the 50p artist trading coin that, um, that Linda sent me, and she's used dimensional glue on this, and just look how beautiful and shiny it is. So it's just great for high highlighting focal images. Finally, I just want to talk about double-sided tape. Um, the only double-sided tape I will use is red double-sided tape. This is incredibly strong. Now, this one here is a brand called Ahoy Red Liner Tape by Walther Strong. You can see that this is um, a multi-width pack. So we've got five reels. We've got two of the three millimeter. Um, we then have a six millimeter, a nine millimeter, and a 12 millimeter reel. Um, really useful to have the different widths oh, I as hope well. that that's answered most of your glue related questions but if I've missed anything out please do let me know in the comments below I'm leaving the video here for today but if you found this video helpful as always I'd really appreciate a thumbs up do let me know what you think in the comments below but most importantly thanks for watching take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon and if you're not subscribed to my channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that bell notification for future videos. Bye for now.